what's up everybody welcome back so while i'm working on the ai tutorial i have something in between we are going to make a fully working and replicating a security camera system and we're also going to implement this into the ai tutorial later so there's definitely a reason why i'm doing this now and you could also use this same technique to make something like a dual rendered scope or a car rear view mirror for example so then you would end up with something like this for the scope or if you want to go for the rear view mirror it would look something like this or maybe a little bit better even but <laughs> you get the idea so this is what we're going to have a look at uh, first i'm going to show you how to set up the uh, scene capture component because that's what we're going to be using so if you're only interested in that part you can easily check that part of the video and then move on uh, also make sure to always check out the search bar for my videos whenever possible i'll make chapters so you can easily navigate through the video and just watch the part that you like so first let's dive into the scene capture component just to show you guys how this is working i'm going to create a quick fake camera so i've just created an actor blueprint and first of all we need to add a scene capture component so we're going to add a component and look for capture and make sure you use the scene capture component 2d so i'm just going to select that now we need to set up pretty much only one thing in here that's really important and that's the texture target and that needs to be a texture render target so we need to create one because we don't have one yet so let's get back to the content browser right click and go to your materials and textures and over here you can select the render target so select this one now I'm just going to leave the default name, that's fine. If we open it up, we don't really need to change anything, but you can mess around with the size. So that's also the resolution of the image, basically. So if you want to sharpen things up a little bit, you might want to increase this. So let's make it something like this. Now if we go back to the scene capture component, we can simply select this texture render target over here and you could set up a few other things if you like and you could also set the field of view and even order your orthographic view for example so we have the camera pretty much set up and now all we need to do is create a material that can use this so just create a material and open it up and now we could simply drag in the texture render target in here and hook it up to the emissive channel and then we should be good to go so you could definitely make uh, more advanced materials with this but uh, just to show you how it's working i'm gonna leave it at this so now if we go back into our scene and we want to apply this texture to something so let's get this little cube over here and let's apply the material there we go and now if we place one of our cameras in the map it should render onto this cube and you can also see it's working already without even playing it so if we go into the game mode now we have a working camera set up so that's really all you need for a scene capture component a component a material and a texture render target and then you can start making cool stuff like scopes uh, rear view mirrors or even camera systems so uh, let's dive into the actual project so first let's have a quick look at what we're actually going to make so i have this project running over here with a couple of the cameras if a player walks into the camera it will start tracking the player and you could also see on the screen that it will follow the player i do not have the correct camera on the screen currently but i'll show you in a bit so if I move out of the range of the camera, it will start doing its own thing again and scanning for targets. So we have a, a terminal set up over here and I can enter the terminal and cycle through the cameras that belong to this terminal. So currently three cameras are linked to this terminal, A, B and C. And I can choose to control one if I would like and then I can uh, look around with the mouse and also zoom in and out. So you can see it's also on the screen over there and then we can also destroy cameras for example so if i shoot at it it will go offline and also the screen will show it's offline over here and you can't access the camera anymore so it won't uh, register you and then we also have a setup where we can have multiple of these terminals and they will have their own cameras linked to them 
though this one only has two link to them and the only uh, well limitation to this currently is that you can only use one terminal at a time so right now the other player would have to exit the terminal for me to be able to uh, access this one and now you can see we have other cameras over here so camera one and two and we could also uh, control them manually just like the other ones so that's how this is going to work and we're going to implement this into the ai tutorial later as well so the cameras can register you and then uh, alarm the ai basically so everything is replicated and i'm going to have it set up with server authority so the server uh, decides everything that's happening and will replicate it to the players or the clients so let's have a quick look at the assets that we're going to use so I'll be using some free assets from the Blueprints example project from the marketplace. So if you want to join along with the same assets, you can open this project and uh, you can also have a look inside this project. It also has a security camera system set up and it shows you a little bit more about how to set up interfaces for sounds or changing the materials on the cameras and things like that. So I'm not going to dive into that too deep in my tutorial because simply I'm not too great with any artistic stuff and uh, it's already in this tutorial or it's not really a tutorial but it's already in this example project so if you want to have a closer look at those things you could check out this project we are simply going to use a few meshes from here so go to the meshes folder and I'm going to select the uh, underground console panel so this one and then also the camera base and the security camera lens and we're going to migrate these into our project so asset actions migrate and make sure you put them in your correct uh, content folder for the project that you're using so make sure you do that and i'll see you in a bit in the new project so back in real with our files in place and by the way, I'm using my first person character tutorial project as a base for this. So you can use any project you'd like. If you want to simply use the first person example project or anything like that, there shouldn't be any issues. If you would like to get your hands on this project, you could join the game there on Discord. The link's in the description down below and you'll get access to my project files, which I'll upload in there for all members for free. So make sure to join if you'd like and also if you think you like the videos or the channel please drop a like down below so let's get started by building our camera system i have created a new folder called cameras and i have created a blueprint in there and that's simply an actor so let's open this up and let's start by setting up our security camera so first of all, in your class defaults, we're going to make sure that we're able to use replication on this. So we're going to enable replicates over here on the right. Make sure you do that. And now let's set up the components. So first I'm going to add a scene component and I'm going to replace my default scene root with it. So we get rid of the annoying circle over there. And now we're going to add a mesh and that's going to be the camera base mesh. So select a static mesh and we're going to use the mesh from the blueprint example project. So let's look for the camera base. And we can simply add the camera mesh to this. So let's add another static mesh and let's look for the other camera mesh that we got from the project. And let's add it in here as well. Oh, that's the base again. Let's make sure we select the lens. So we have this set up now we're going to add a trigger to this so if a player walks into this trigger the camera is going to follow him so with the camera selected i'm going to add a capsule component or the capsule collision and i'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and let's resize it so i'm going to make it something about uh, 500 units long for now maybe and about 128 wide and then i'm going to drag it forward so one side is touching the camera over here and we could center it a little bit better probably if we move it up a little so something like this should work and now we're going to add our actual camera component or the scene capture component that we used before in this video so add component and look for the capture component Again, we're going to use the 2D one, so let's add this. 
and now you can place it in the correct position if you like so it actually centered with the lens of the camera a bit better so something like this you do and I'm also gonna add a little particle effect in here for if we destroy the camera so I'm just gonna select the base and add a particle effect and I have uh, imported the starter content in here so I'm simply gonna use the particle smoke effect that comes with it and that will have to do for now so let's disable this by default so deselect the auto activate in here and now we need to set up our scene capture component so make sure that we select this and we need to get our texture render target so let's create one let's go back to my cameras folder in here right click and i am going to go to materials and textures and select the render target in here so this is going to be my texture render target for the security cameras and let's put an index behind this so we're going to use multiple of this later on now for now i'm going to set this to 1280 by 720 and this should do fine so let's get rid of this and let's make sure we put it in our texture target for the scene capture component over here and then we should be pretty much good to go so we have all the components set up now let's have a look at moving our camera and how it's going to follow our player so first of all we're going to start in our begin play and we're going to check if we have authority or not so as I mentioned a little bit before, we're going to make sure the server has authority over everything that happens with the cameras. So we're going to pretend it's a really important gameplay feature. And we simply want the server to know everything and the clients do not have control. So I'm simply going to do everything on the server in here and make sure that it replicates to our clients. And first we are going to get the idle movement. So we're going to use a timeline for that. So if I right click and use for timeline, then we can add a timeline. And that's pretty much the same thing as a curve that we used for the sway of the weapon in our first person character tutorial. It's just something that's built into the blueprint already. So let's make this something like a camera idle movement. And let's open it up by double clicking it. So inside our timeline, uh, this is simply going to provide us with a flow track that we can use to feed our lerp node later. So we're going to add a flow, trap, uh, flow track of, on the top light left over here. So we'll click it and I'm going to call this something like camera movement. And I'm going to right click in here and add a key. And the first one is going to be at time zero and the value is going to be zero as well. Now we're going to add a second key, so right click again and make sure you put this at time 1 and then value 0. So we have a first second where there's no movement. Then let's add another key and let's put this at value uh, 7 and then I'm going to, uh, sorry, time 7 and then value 1. Now we're going to add another weight in here, so add another key and let's give it time 9 and then again value 1 so there's 2 seconds where nothing will happen 9 7 so it gave a little error over here but it looks fine to me so let's continue let's add another key to the curve load and this one is going to be uh, back to 0 and that's going to take another 6 seconds so we're going to be at time 15 and then back at value uh, 0 and then make sure we add another second of uh, doing nothing over here so we have a nice equal loop so I'm going to right click and again put this at time 16 and now value 0 again so we have our timeline set up and we can save it and go back to our event graph. So we're going to use this to interpolate between our rotators for the camera, but we need to set up a little bit more first. So let's go to our construction script. We need to define at what camera pitch we want the angle to operate. So first I'm going to create a variable and that's going to be my camera pitch. That's going to be a float. 
and then we also need to get a variable that's going to determine how far it's going to swing from left to right so i'm going to duplicate this uh, variable over here and this is going to be my camera search angle so for both of these i'm going to say they are instance editable so we can easily change them in our level if we want to and now for the construction script we need to set up the pitch so i'm gonna get my camera mesh i should have renamed them probably but the static mesh one is the camera mesh so i'm gonna get this in here and then i'm gonna say uh, add relative rotation and then we're gonna simply add the rotation from the camera pitch so i'm gonna split the struct pin and plug in my camera pitch over here and that should work and now we also want to make sure that we store the default rotation of our camera so we can use it later on to determine uh, the maximums that we're going to clamp it to so first let's create another variable in here and that's going to be default rotation and that's a rotator and now we are simply going to get the world rotation from the camera mesh so get world rotation and make sure that we store it into our default rotation so we have that set up for later there we go now let me quickly double check yeah we should be good to go over here so if we go back into our event graph we can start working with the timeline so we are going to lerp the rotators that we just set up so i'm going to get my camera pitch and my camera search angle and i'm going to make a rotator so drag off make rotator and this is going to be the pitch and the other one is the yaw we're not going to roll the camera obviously so that's going to be zero and then we're going to duplicate this and we're going to multiply the search angle with minus one so if we have a search angle of 70 degrees it's going to go from 70 to minus 70 for the yaw so that's what we're setting up here so float multiplied by float minus one and plug it into the yaw pin so we are going to lerp between these rotators so get a lerp node and plug in the other one in the b pin for the alpha we're going to use the float tra from the float track of our timeline so that's going to define how far it's going to lerp between these rotators and then we are going to store this into a new variable so let's promote the variable and that's going to be our new rotation and make sure that we link this up to the update pin over here and we also make sure that our new rotation is a replicated variable so on the right side over here make sure that it's replicated so we already made sure that we are on the server so now we are should be good to go uh, the server is going to change the variable and the clients will have it changed for them as well now to get some movement going we're gonna go to our event tick and first i'm gonna check again if we are the server or not so has authority and for clients i'm simply going to disable event tick because uh, they won't need it so let's get rid of it so set tick enabled and let's make sure that it's set to false over here so all this is going to do is disable the tick event uh, for the rest the actor should work fine so that's what we're doing over here now if we are the server we're going to get the idle movement going and first we need to know if we have a target or not so uh, if we want to be idle or following a target so let's create a boolean and that's going to be has target and let's make a little branch check in here like this so for the has target variable we also want to make sure that it's replicated so make sure you set that on the right side over here and now if we are in idle state we can simply rotate the camera component so let's get our static mesh and i'm gonna say set relative rotation and we can use the rotators that we just created so first i'm gonna get my uh, camera in here again <clears throat> and get the current rotation so get relative rotation so where it's at right now 
and we want to interpolate to our new rotation so let's get the new rotation in here that we got from the, the event begin play where we added the timeline and we're gonna interp to so R interp to let's plug the new rotation into the target make sure we get the delta time from our event tick over here <clears throat> and I'm gonna make it a nice and smooth movement so let's start with something like 0 0.5 and we can adjust this later so that's basically the speed of the camera moving left to right so if we do not have a target let's get the false pin and let's plug them in like this so now if we set up our camera pitch and search angle we should have a camera that swings from left to right so let's see if that's working let's go to the viewport and let's add one of our cameras so I already did in a previous attempt so when I select this camera I can adjust the pitch over here so I'm gonna make sure that it angles down so let's say something about minus 40 and for the search angle I'm gonna use um, something like 80 degrees so it's going to go from 80 degrees left to minus 80 degrees right or at least it should so let's see if this is working <coughs> there we have it our camera is moving There is something wrong because it's not really moving the way it should. So let's check out why that's happening. Okay, so for some reason the length of my timeline was set to 5 seconds. So I didn't notice but we have this grayed out area and the length over here it's set to 5 and the length actually is 16 seconds. So make sure that the length over here matches the length of your timeline. And now the movement of the camera should actually work. So it should wing, swing all the way from left to all the way right. And there it goes. So we have the idle movement set up. First let's set up our target uh, following logic. So if a player walks into the view trigger it's going to get followed by the camera. So let's make sure that's working first. And we need to get some overlap events in here to determine what our target is. So let's select the capsule component over here and I'm going to set the collision presets to be a trigger and make sure uh, these settings over here match your project. So I have a food IK trace and I should make sure that it's not uh, set to block over here but again I'm not using the food IK right now so I'm not going to bother but make sure that the settings over here match with your project. And now we are going to get the begin overlap and end overlap events in here. So let's get actor begin overlap and let's get the actor end overlap as well. And first we are going to make sure that we are the server again. So I'm going to drag off and say has authority. And only the server is going to change these variables. So if we are a client we're not going to do anything. If we are the server we're going to cast the overlapping actor to our first person character. To make sure that it's actually a player. So first let's get a branch in here and make sure we do not already have a target. So plug in our has target boolean. And then we're going to drag off the other actor and cast it to the first person character. So if has target is false then we're going to make sure that we continue and if the cast succeeds then we're going to set our has target uh, variable to true. And we also want to make a variable for our target actor so I'm going to right click over here promote to variable and call this my target actor. So that's the actor that I'm going to follow. And uh, I'm going to make sure that this is a replicated variable as well. So make sure it's replicated on the right side over here. And plug it in the execution pin. So that should do for the event begin overlap. And we're going to do uh, the same in reverse for end overlap. So again check if we are authority. Uh, check if we have a target and cast. So let's copy this stuff. So if we have a target and that's true, we're going to go in here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, well, we don't really need to cast. We could simply get our other actor and compare it to our target actor. That's maybe a better decision. So let's plug those in like this. 
So if our target is exiting the view trigger, then we're going to say uh, has target is false and we're going to get rid of our target actor variable. So let's set both of those back to default. And make sure that we plug in the condition over here. So now we should be good to go for the begin and end overlap events and we can actually make sure that it's working so let's get a little bit of room for our event tick now if we have a target we want to get an uh, angle from the camera to our target so first we're going to do that so i'm going to get my camera in here so that's the static mesh number one and i want to get the world rotation so get a world rotation and i also want to get the world location from the camera so get world location. Mm, there we go. So I want to get a unit direction vector from the camera to our target actor. So I'm going to drag off the world location and do unit direction vector. And then I'm going to plug in the uh, actor location from our target actor. So get the target actor in here, get actor location. And that's going to go into the 2 pin. So this is going to give us a vector from the camera to the target actor. And now we can simply interpolate between uh, these two vectors. So I'm going to drag off this one and go interpolate 2. So interp 2. And I'm going to move this one to the target pin and then I'm going to simply get the world rotation and plug it in here. That's going to get the rotation from X vector. So that should work. Make sure you plug in the delta time pin. And for the interpolation speed, I'm going to say something around five or six maybe. So again, we can mess around with this later. Now to make sure that this won't exceed our uh, maximum rotation settings, we're going to add some checks in here. So first I'm going to get my default rotation. <coughs> and I'm going to break the rotator, so break it. And let's get uh, some angle clamps in here. So first I'm going to get my pitch and I'm going to say... Uh, um, to define a maximum, I'm just going to use a static value. So I'm going to say um, the maximum of pitch I want to use is going to be 80 or something. So let's get a minus float in here. And then I'm going to drag off the other pin and I'm going to make a literal float. And plug in 80. So that means that the uh, maximum pitch of the camera is going to be 80 and the minimum pitch is going to be minus 80. So that's how I'm going to use it. So I'm going to drag off this and get a clamp angle node. And this is going to be our minimum angle degree pitch. So make sure you plug that in over there. And then from the pitch we also going to get another node and that's going to be plus float. <coughs> and we're going to add the literal float to this and that's going to be the maximum angle degrees. And now for the actual uh, angle we're going to plug in the pitch from our uh, vector over here so if we break the rotator we can copy this node plug it in like this so it's going to get the rotation from x vector again and then we can use <coughs> this uh, pitch variable as the angle for the clamp node so this is our new rotation and it's going to check if it's between minus 80 and 80 for the pitch and we're going to do the same thing for the yaw so let's get another one of these clamp angle nodes and I'm going to plug in the yaw over here in the degrees and then I'm going to get the minus and the plus nodes and plug in the yaw into the top pins and get the literal float so it's again limiting itself to minus 80 degrees uh, yaw and 80 degrees to the other side so we're not going to be able to exceed those variables and then we can simply turn this back into a rotator and set the world rotation for the camera to this. So I'm going to make a rotator. We're going to leave the roll alone and simply plug in the pitch and the yaw. Get our 
static mesh in here and set our world rotation. So that should work for following our target. So if we plug this into the branch check for the target pin in the event tick, and we should be good to go. So compile and let's have a little look at this. So now if I walk into the view trigger of the camera, it's going to center to me and it's going to keep following me until I reach one of its maximum angles or the maximum length of the trigger and then it's going to go back to its idle movement. So I see I put it a little bit far into the wall so we could get it a little bit more forward like this. And this should also uh, replicate so if I get my second viewport up and let me see I'm not sure where it's at oh come on oh I'm messing up I select the wrong project when I entered uh, two players I'm sorry so the viewport is on another monitor obviously oh come on you gotta be kidding me there we go So now we have the camera over here. If I look at it and I'm going to walk with the client into the camera, then we're going to see that it's actually not set to a listen server. So we're not even seeing each other. <laughs> oh, come on. So again, the client is going to walk into the camera and the server is going to look at it. And now the camera should follow the client. Uh, we have all kinds of fucked up situations so if we look at the host screen then the camera is actually following me but on my own screen it's not working so I probably didn't set a replication somewhere so let me double check and be right back so I forgot to set up the replication for the camera component so if we select the static mesh over here you want to make sure that the component replicates is also enabled so because we are replicating the like the movement and the rotation and things like that we want to enable it over here in the defaults and then if we play it it's going to work so if the uh, server is looking at the camera and the client is walking into it so now the camera is also following the client on its screen well that was a mess up with my mouse because the batteries are nearly empty so that's working and you can also see on the server screen that it's working and the other way around if I walk into this trigger and the host actually or the client actually left the trigger then it's going to follow the host. So we have that set up. Uh, I think we'll cut off the episode over here and get back to it in the next episode. So uh, thanks for watching for now and talk to you later guys. Bye bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video or you think you might have learned something, please consider leaving a like. I'll be back for more.